Welcome back everyone. Imagine for a moment that your language has been taken from you and the effect that that could have on you, your life and your culture. In Western New York, you don't have to go far to find out what kind of impact that could have. You just talk to a member of the Seneca Nation. They have experienced this directly, but they are trying to find ways to keep their language and their culture alive. Two on your side's Terry Belke has this Thanksgiving Day story. The Seneca Nation has roots in the Northeast that are both deep and old, a history that dates back thousands of years. So it should be no surprise that their language reflects the depth of their culture. It has been here since time immemorial. It's our way of expressing ourselves. And in it, it was all of our values, um, our morals, our ethics is in our language. Everything that uh, in the Seneca language has to do, and all Iroquois languages, and I'm sure all native languages, have to do with their relationship to others. Um, we have a relationship with the earth, we have a relationship with the sun and the moon and the, you know, and our maker. The Seneca language has all but disappeared over the last century. Its decline caused in large part by the tragic failure of the American Indian boarding school system. Students were forbidden to speak their native language at the schools, and to do so meant punishment. The motto was, kill the Indian and save the man. I believe, in my heart, it was very orchestrated and intentional. In um, around 1850, we had the introduction of Indian boarding schools, and that has taken the biggest toll in an orchestrated, organized American government attack on our language because it was forbidden. We can dwell on that and blame that, you know, for us not being able to speak our language, but but it's a, no, we gotta get over that and we gotta, uh, you know, we gotta forge forward and keep on. That is exactly what the nation is doing. They've developed a multifaceted approach to teaching their ancient tongue. The whole process begins with the Mommy and Me program, which began two years ago with four babies, their moms, and a great idea. Our first language fluent speaker, Helen Beaver, um, she's our Oxode, she's our oldest Oxode, actually, uh, 93. So she sits in with them and she rocks the babies, um, talks to them, um, just lets, them, lets the moms interact with her so that they can have language that way and the babies are listening. Year two, they're starting to mimic the moms, so they're starting to say words back. So um, so it's, it is working, it is effective. As they get older, the students move on to the Faith Keepers School in the Montessori Seneca Language Nest. Here they spend the day learning both language and culture. Throughout the day, yes, we will encourage, um, encourage speech from them. We will, uh, a lot of times when they say something in English, we'll repeat it back to them in Seneca so that this way they can hear how that's supposed to go. We've had some very good success stories um, throughout the years where we have had children initiate conversation on their own. One of the biggest challenges faced in trying to pass on the language is the dearth of fluent Seneca speakers. Out of the entire Seneca population, there are less than 30 people who can speak the language fluently. That means the teachers must be taught too, and that's where the immersion program comes in, teaching the language to adults who will then pass it on to the young. Learners slash teachers, and as soon as they learn something, then they teach it. They learn some more, and they teach it. And so it's an ongoing cycle that happens, you know, with language that we would be using in English every day. Now we're able to, to um, use Seneca for those. The programs form the roots of a tree that nourishes many. It's teaching that feeds back into itself, creating a self-sustaining cycle that will help preserve the Seneca way of life and lead the nation into the future. Our young people are speaking and more and more and getting better at speaking the language. We encourage them to continue and to not stop in the future. You stay optimistic. You believe that what you're doing is for a better cause. You believe that what you're doing is for the future of not just you or your family or even the children here. Really what we're doing is for the nation. Really, us, us as a people. Reporting from the Seneca Nation, I'm Terry Belke, Channel 2 News.